I just discovered something 30 years too late. And I thought I would tell you younger people, particularly the women, so that you won't end up sitting in bed at 55 years old making a video like this. How many of you out there have issues with self-esteem, men or women or queers? How many of you secretly, even though you've really tried not to, bought into some of the crap they told you about yourself? How many of you acted on it or failed to act because even though you resisted it as hard as you could, somewhere deep inside you still kind of believed it? And how many of you were afraid you'd make a terrible fool of yourself if you went with your intuition and your gut and your native emotions and took a risk? Okay, I'm in love. The person knows I'm in love with her. It's not reciprocal. And you know what? It doesn't matter. I wish I'd known this 30 years ago. See, in the past, if I'd had such strong feelings for somebody, it's not just a sexual attraction, although that's there too. It's, I fall in love with big, juicy, giant brains. Cool. I could just fall in between her ears for months and be totally absorbed in what's going on in there. Whoa. But I have this thing that I've always done that I don't deserve it. Or that I'm making an ass of myself. Or that there's some secret language and I'm not adult enough or then there's the superficial things too like okay look at me you know my health is bad my teeth are rotten I'm living in a house trailer I'm broadcasting from a bed that smells like cat pee and an old man <laughs> I really don't have two nickels to rub together my prospects don't look too good I couldn't just support a wife and kids <laughs> that I had to tell her. And the reason I had to tell her is that I wasn't going to go to that place of feeling shamed and inadequate and unworthy and stupid and awkward and foolish and bad. I wasn't going to do it. Hey, I'm an atheist. I can let go of the guilt trips. I don't have to believe in original sin. I don't have to believe that I'm unworthy unless I get saved or somebody intervenes. I'm the only savior I've got. And you know she's fine with this. She's not going away. She hovers rather closely. In her own way, she takes care of me and looks out for me. It's been a long time since I've had that. Um, and I get to be honest and not hide and not uh, reject her from my life because what I feel is so strong that being around her is painful. Guess what? It's not painful. It's poignant. Well, first of all, she lives seven hours away. What is that, a third of the globe? Pretty much. Uh, so there's a logistical issue. Second of all, our lives are really, really different. And her priorities are really, really different from mine. Um, oh, I suppose I could throw in the towel, give up everything I love, and uh, try to force myself to be something I'm not. And But you see, she's not stupid. So this is a real exercise in being an authentic human being, in being 
and being my best self. It's really liberating. I'm glad that she quickens me. And I never know. It's always a surprise, you know. There will be a Skype phone call. And the sound of her voice in my ear. I'll just go all tender. Or I'll watch a YouTube video she's made. And, and nondescript. Not a very profound topic. And somewhat mundane. And then the turn of her head, or the way she'll laugh at a joke. <laughs> and she's really honest, so what she says in videos and in blogs, in emails, in, um, in any digital medium, what she says I can pretty much trust and there's a lot of material available so I've been able to do a lot of background research I have a lot of respect for this person she's a, she's she's a real she's courageous she's been through a lot of stuff in her lifetime that nobody should have to go through and I can relate I like heroes I need heroes. I am a hero. So if you're young and you're insecure and you're shy and you've internalized those messages, you really need to look at it. Take the risk. I haven't done anything to shame myself by being honest by having a genuine natural feeling for somebody by caring so profoundly I didn't do anything wrong this is the best thing a human person can do is love I know I amuse her I think I confuse her too <laughs> It's good to be alive and awake again inside my body. It's good to have this, um, it's good to have this intimacy between us. I wasn't expecting this. She certainly wasn't. I thought I'm so old and ugly and decrepit and poor and immobilized and restricted. I thought that that part of my life is over. I don't get to love anymore. And I sucked it up and I was brave about it and I didn't feel sorry for myself because that would have killed me. And I went on, and I loved the planet as well as I could, in the absence of close friends or family. And then one day, somebody decided to basically troll her channel and tease her, and sent all of his subscribers over there to tease her. And I had never seen this person before, never heard her, not a clue. And it was instant, it was like, I need to know who this is. This is one of the best gifts I've given myself in many years. So, make sure you know the difference between limerence you know, all that juicy, tingly stuff. Make sure you know the difference between simple limerence, which sparkles and twinkles and distracts and tickles, and then 
Make sure you know the difference between that and something more substantial. It's an odd thing, this digital medium business. There's a whole archive of her life online. There's a whole archive of my life online. So I get to do a lot of catch-up of 20 years of not knowing her. Just know the difference. Make sure you're solid. And then see what happens. And I'll tell you what. It's worth it. It's so worth it. And I've given myself a period of, uh, Wikipedia says that Western, modern Western courtships last two years and seven months. Now they're assuming, of course, this is toward a heterosexual monogamous bonding. <clears throat> I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing a homosexual monogamous bonding. I'm not doing that. Not now. No. No. However, I like that time frame of two years and seven months. So I sent her an email declaring that I was intending on courting her. I'm figuring it out as I go along. And you know what? Whatever happens, I am so delighted to know that she exists on the planet. And it's just fine to love her with or without her permission and with or without her participation. She participates in her own way, on her own level, she participates. My gosh, we communicate almost daily. Just somebody I met on YouTube and I never would have met her if it hadn't been for a, excuse me, a mutual friend. A box of goodies from New Mexico is on its way. I'm mailing it on Monday. And hopefully she and that mutual friend who don't live far from each other will uh, have a little box opening party on Skype so I can be there. Hopefully with tequila or Mexican beer and lime and salt. Don't forget the lime and salt. I'm even making a mixtape, a little playlist of uh, some of my favorite mariachi and other Mexican songs. It was really nice putting that together. And she can share it with a mutual friend. And she won't say it out loud, but I think she's really looking forward to it. <laughs> I even stuck the camera under the bed so that she can see the box. Do you want to see the box? All right, I'll stick the camera under the bed so you can see the box. Because it's heading across the planet on Monday. You can't see the box. It's too dark. Wait, there's cords. I'm sorry, you guys. You can't see the box. It's a box that um, printer paper comes in. It's a very sturdy box. There are no packing materials. It's all... There's a cord, right? Yeah. It's all contents. It's padded with food and fabric. And there's no just packing material stuff. It's all something. The whole box is something. In fact, the box itself is even wrapped in fabric to make it stronger. And then it'll be wrapped in paper. I'm shipping it at book rate. A, a, a friend of mine, I was telling her about it. I'm sending this box, but it's going to cost so much money. My friend said, 
does it rattle? And I said, no. Does the weight shift around much? He said, no. Well, why don't you ship it book rate? Oh, yeah. So I can't go to the local post office because I already told them I was collecting things to send and wanting to know shipping rates and so on. So they will know it's not books. So I need to go to the next town. I need to go there anyway because I'm going to go grocery shopping. Actually, I'm going to Albuquerque on Monday because I have that um, MRI. I hope I can sit still on the table. You're supposed to sit very still. <laughs> and I'm going to be so excited about sending this silly box of stuff. Oh, well. So if you love somebody, tell them. Don't just tell them. Love them. Flat out, just love them. And don't wait 30 years to do it. Bye. Uh -huh.